the stars made me do it. Welcome back. This is round two of episodes about the elements. Because we could because not keep it together last time. We could not keep it together. So we have already discussed this topic with each other. Mm -hmm. And now we'll be discussing it with you all. <laughs> so I feel like we're going to just like plow through it because it's going to be like, yeah, we talked about this already. But we had like so much fun that. recording, but then we listened back and we're like, this was just a spastic conversation where both of us either had too much or not enough caffeine and there was no <laughs> continuity. And so <laughs> it was just a lot of tangents and not much education, I guess. It was a bunch of nonsense. So this episode... We're starting off great with another bunch of nonsense. Yes. Um, what we're going to be getting into for this episode is all about the different elements. So we've mentioned this before, that there are four elements that are associated with each of the signs. Um, this episode will be an overview of those four elements, the signs associated, the kind of um, characteristics, qualities associated with each of the elements. And yeah. Okay. Do you want to um, jump into the first? We're going to start with fire because Aries is at the beginning of the zodiac and Aries is a fire sign. Um, do you want to talk about yeah, the fire element? I do because that's me. Um, what might be helpful also to think about, um, maybe we can post a picture as well of just like the zodiac wheel. Um, it's a circle and it's all the 12 elements in a circle going in order of the season starting with Aries. So when we say that we're starting with Aries because it's the first sign, if you think of it like a circle, it's the same as like the seasons being presented in a circle. So we're starting yes. with Aries. Leo is the second sign, the second fire sign. It is a fixed sign, so it is in the center of its season. And Sagittarius is the last fire sign. It is the last sign of its season, so it is a mutable sign. And those are the three fire signs, yours truly being the Sagittarius fire mutable sign. Okay, and so before we like get into the personality traits of the fire uh, signs, I just wanted to say we'll have an episode where we talk about the cardinal fixed and mutable signs as well. Yeah, to give a more of a... Other thing. A thing that always trips Tara up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's like the most confusing, well, maybe not the most confusing, but I feel like houses really start confusing me. But like besides houses, it's one of the most confusing things for me, even though it's not that difficult. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have an episode or a sometime in the distance blue moon episode. <laughs> so it's not yeah, blue moon super frequent. Yes. Um but yeah, on cardinal fixed immutable. But those are the three fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And you've already heard a lot about Leo if you've listened to our our previous Leo episodes. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the fire traits should sound familiar. So the characteristics of fire signs are action-oriented people. So within throughout this episode, we'll give examples of the type of orientation of the signs, and um, and fire signs are action-oriented. They're action people. Uh, so they are spontaneous and enthusiastic. They're pursuers, and they're adventure-seeking people. Why don't you tell me about All my right. strengths? Tell so me strengths. about my strengths, would you? Uh, I, I wrote down ambitious AF because they are <laughs> all the fire signs I know have so much ambition, and I have no fire in my chart as we have said before, and I need fire people to get me to do things. I mean, so like you and my sister, who is a water sign but has a ton of fire in her chart, like, when you visit me, you, like, crack the whip and make me do things that need to get yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. It's really good that you guys do that to me. So, yes, ambitious AF. Um, spontaneous. And then you have big passions, the fire signs. Not so much like, um, and I wouldn't say it in an emotional way. It's, you're passionate. Yeah. Yeah. Like people, like fiery people get very passionate when they're talking about something. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have the emotion attached with it, but I'm very passionate about what I'm talking about. It's yes. almost, I don't know if I can explain it coming from like a, 
a knowledge point of view, like things that I find very interesting. I just deliver with passion. I feel like fire signs deliver what they're saying with passion oftentimes. And even like, you know, we talked to my cousin Paul. I feel like what he says, he delivers with passion, but it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be loud and it doesn't have to be uh, emotional, but Mm -hmm. it's with passion. Yes. Yeah. Courageous, strong, uh, like to light a fire under others, which, yes. Quite literally, I, you are the fire. <laughs> I light your fire. Or I, I light the fire under you to get shit done. <laughs> Weaknesses. Angry, obsessive, jealous, impulsive. Which again, yeah. not everybody. Uh, a fire sign on a bad day, maybe. Or an unevolved fire sign. Yeah, fire sign um, on a bad day and unevolved, definitely. Mm-hmm. I'm, I don't see myself as a very jealous person, but maybe it's more like I feel that, but I get over it. Mm-hmm. Um. And impulsive, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> that's why I'm back in Normandy, because I was on my way home to Paris, and I realized that it was going to be like 100 degrees all week in Paris in the land of no air conditioning, and I was like, nope, and I literally then went and bought a train ticket back to Normandy, <laughs> and it was just like, decision has been made right now. Very impulsive, I yes. would say. Um, most of the fire signs I know, like, it's uh, it's that got that fire energy like boom we're ready to go let's do it Mm -hmm. um yeah i definitely i mean i love all the fire signs in my life and i love being a fire sign and i think there's also like we said with leos that there's a warmth that you get Mm -hmm. um and i don't think impulsive has to be a bad thing either like you mentioned in previous episodes i think that impulsive can be definitely a negative or unevolved sign but sometimes i think impulsive decisions like you know thinking about the opposite of people who like can't people who can't make decisions i don't know Mm -hmm. we'll get to that in air signs um (laughs) i think it can it could not you know not necessarily be a negative thing but Mm -hmm. like we said unevolved weaker moments Mm -hmm. on a bad day yeah yes okay and then the next sign uh sorry the next element we're going to talk about would be earth because going back to the concept of like all the zodiac signs being in a circle and uh going in order the next sign uh is Taurus, and Taurus is an earth sign so why don't you tell me about some earth signs let me take it away all right so we have tauruses which are the fixed sign of the earth signs virgos which are mutable and capricorn which is the cardinal sign of earth signs and then for the orientation, like I mentioned before, for each of the elements, they are centrally oriented. Mm, so centrally. With their, they're so central, <laughs> these earth signs. <laughs> but also, like, I don't know, like, they pay attention to those things more. Like, mm-hmm. the things with their senses, they that affects them more. And, and earthy people are earthy people. I feel like, you know, um, touch, taste, sound, smell, yeah, all of that. Yeah, and I think of all the elements, earth is, like, the solid object element yeah you know yeah or, i mean i guess you could kind of say water too not really but like air and fire it takes up not. space it so it's yeah 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 okay um so they're known for being patient and practical hard workers and uh seeking stability mm-hmm. so if you have a really solid i don't know reliable grounded person in your life there's a very good chance that they are an earth sign or that they have a lot of earth in them Mm -hmm. like um we talked about in our rambling uh i have an earth moon and even though i have so much fire going on i have so much of my chart that's in capricorn that i feel like among my friends i tend to be um i tend to be more grounded and stable Mm mm-hmm yeah. Well, we both have the uh, Capricorn stelliums in our chart, which just means we have a lot of Capricorn in our chart. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. We can be grounded people, even though you're an airy fairy and I'm a fiery, fiery person. I don't know. A fire fairy. I'm a fire fairy. <laughs> <laughs> so strengths of Earth signs: they are grounded, logical, hardworking, down to earth. Um. I'm thinking I would like, like to I would like to note that Tara wrote down in our notes down to earth. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I was trying to I was trying to do that for each of them where we said the fire signs will literally light a fire under you. Earth signs are down to earth. Mm-hmm. Um and we'll get to the, the But it's true. That's water. totally true for a strength. 
but um i really yeah. think that earth signs are very down to earth and that they're mm-hmm. super hard working people I, like they just they're really determined mm-hmm. um determined hard working people and now <laughs> to, to contradict what we just said they can be can you hear that <laughs> can you hear in the background the uh, the firehouse yeah yeah Oh, so that'll be in our show. They liked our fire signs. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's the worst. Usually, when I have conference calls, they're at twelve o'clock, and as soon as I call in, the firehouse comes is in the background. So like, that's slight my... tangent. I've always wondered <laughs> if like firefighters would tend to be more fire signs or like water signs. You know, like hey, mm-hmm. I can be around fire, or like hey, I'm gonna put out this fire. Well, I know Dan yeah. was in like the volunteer fire department for like a short time, and he's a water, he's a water sign. sign. And then my grandpa on my dad's side was a firefighter, but he was a Virgo. So, so my theory <laughs> holds nothing. All right, moving on. <laughs> moving back to, <laughs> I would say probably not. Well, actually, I don't know because fire signs they're ambitious, so they'll be like put out the fire, but they also like the fire, so they'll be like let it burn. I don't know. I, I don't. Like I don't we know the mind of a rendition of "Let It Go," but let it burn. Let it burn. They, it's it's, it's been done. It's been done. I've seen it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know how to say it in English anymore, but in French we'd be like "bref," and then we move on. So, mm-hmm. um, all weaknesses. Right. <laughs> so yes, their weaknesses: lazy, <laughs> stubborn, and materialistic. Um, I don't know and like about. Well, I guess it depends. Um, I know like Tauruses can be associated with being very lazy. Um, and very stubborn. Yes, and so I don't. I'd say all the Earth signs are stubborn. I don't know. I agree. Um, but I, I wouldn't I say Capricorns are, are really very lazy. So Capricorns are very ambitious. They're a cardinal sign, like we said before, and that means that they're taking charge. They are starting off the season, so they tend to be very ambitious people and not super lazy. I would say maybe like not an unevolved but maybe like an unfulfilled capricorn i feel like capricorns like having a capricorn moon i feel so much better when i have a project Mm -hmm. and it contradicts my lazy sagittarius traits but like i feel so much better when i have a goal to work towards like like capricorns are very goal-oriented people and um so i don't i would not consider capricorn to be lazy um but then that is a trait that's sometimes like associated with more of like a Taurus but Mm -hmm. um stubborn I think that all of them yeah could be pretty stubborn and materialistic all earth signs like nice things like not that you can't like nice things and not be an earth sign but like you know um Capricorns like Capricorns love money Capricorns (laughs) love making money they love being involved in business things and money things. So um, that's like, you know, considered nice things. Tauruses really appreciate, um, let's say, you know, they would really like to stay at a really nice hotel and they would like to go out to a really nice meal and maybe like splurge on, um, I don't know, going on like a, a shopping spree type of thing like that would be something that would make a Taurus happy if you have your moon in Taurus, if you have your Venus in Taurus, those would be ways that would maybe make you feel loved, whereas um, not that I wouldn't enjoy doing some of those things, but like being a Sagittarius with a lot of Sagittarius going on, like I would hands down choose an adventure to see somewhere new than... um, or to take a spontaneous plane trip somewhere, I don't know, than to stay at a super nice fancy hotel with like a really nice meal. That would be nice, but doesn't do it for me the same way that it would for like a Taurus. Um, And then for uh, Virgos, Virgos really like to be really, uh, to be put together, well put together. They like to present themselves well. So I feel like materialistic in the way of like, you can tell that I take care of myself, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Sure, yeah. I feel like that's how it works for the three signs, the three earth signs in a different way. Mm-hmm. But again, like we had that as weaknesses, but they don't necessarily have to be weaknesses. But I do think that um, in general, the earth signs are seen to be more like money driven than the other signs. I mm-hmm. don't know. No, I, and, yeah. and again, it's it's not a bad thing as long as you don't let it like control your life. Like... Yeah, if you make yeah. some money, you can have nice things. 
you know <laughs> it's not yeah. A, yeah, yeah yeah it doesn't have to be seen as a bad thing to want to make money in life right yeah yeah yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, All right. So, so we have talked about fire. We've talked about earth. The next sign in the zodiac is an air sign. <laughs> and so why don't why doesn't our um, very own airhead take it away for know, air signs? Yes. Okay. So air signs they are Gemini, which is the mutable of the air signs. Libra, which is cardinal, and Aquarius, which is fixed. They are intellectually oriented. Um, they're perhaps known as the thinkers um for sure not necessarily yeah. like the wise thinkers but they're thinkers they they think about <laughs> things right i'm always yeah, they're you know they're constantly like like we said so fire action oriented earth centrally oriented air intellectually oriented so like mm -hmm. they are going to be people who are lost in their own head and mm -hmm. sometimes they that can come across like you know if if used and um what's the word like um uh, utilized maybe like in uh, the right way it can be a huge strength but mm -hmm. um, it's also they tend to definitely get lost in their own heads um, and to be stimulated by intellectual conversation and topics so yes um, the air signs are uh, in addition to that known for being social and objective communicators and information seeking yes so since they've got all that you know, thinking going on, most of the time they tend to be communicators because they're constantly thinking and then constantly communicating. And you know what else I would like to add uh, about being a communicator? Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you're, like, good at talking to people, but even, like, just... Like, here's an example. If, like, two people aren't getting along, oftentimes an air sign in the middle can, like, communicate what each of them is trying to say. Yeah like and be like this person yep. meant this they didn't mean it that way and this person said this you know they're like almost yep. almost like um well libras like are known for being yeah 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 <laughs> you know? and libras are known for being like that because they're the balance and because mm -hmm. they're like that they're known as, they're known for being mediators yes um so i think that that could be specific to libras um and Gemini's are super chatty people. Like if you, yeah. they're the mo they're the chattiest people of the zodiac, one hundred percent. They can't stop. And um, and then Aquarius are like they are the people that are thinking from the completely like strange side of like in comparison to everybody else. Like I'm just thinking like if, you know, if everybody's in like a museum, like looking at a painting and like, okay, let's talk about this painting. We're looking at a painting. The Aquarius would be the one like against the wall, like looking at the painting from like the side angle and being like, <laughs> we can tell the light is coming from, you know, like they're just like, where, do, why would you even think to look at a painting from next to it instead of in front of it? But somehow like they find out cool information that way like so mm -hmm. it's they're very intellectual and very um they each have it in different ways but um are definitely in their heads yes so their strengths communicative joyful imaginative thinkers um I and agree. i think because of the imagination i think a lot of them can be very creative too though the air signs aren't like known as the crazy creative sign that's more the water sign but i think a lot of them are creatives yeah because they are constantly thinking so it's coming up with like and like we said before um well like we said in our tangent that luckily nobody else has to hear um uh that they are very creative but that doesn't necessarily mean artistic mm -hmm. because i think that the artistic ones tend to be more watery people yeah. but um but creative doesn't have to just be in an artistic way. It could be creative way to apply something scientific, a creative way to build something. You know, it, it could be in, um, in all different ways because they uh, are idea people for sure. Yes. All right. And weaknesses. your weaknesses. My weakness. I'm a self-centered, dishonest, flaky person with their head in the clouds. No. Um, sometimes? No. <laughs> self-centered. <laughs> self-centered dishonest flaky head in the clouds in quotes um yeah i would say flaky but not intentionally flaky um yeah it's literally because we forget like unless m me personally if i don't write things down and have that list in front of my face at all times i will forget it a hundred percent i'm <laughs> well not a hundred percent but a lot of the time i will forget it and like when i ask when i tell you i'm gonna do something and you're like okay 
And I, I said, just, you have to keep reminding me every day for the next couple of days. Just send me a friendly text. Hey, did you do that thing? Did you do that thing? And I'll do it. I just need the reminder You know that to do beautiful, it. the beautiful <laughs> logo of ours? <gasps> that was 100% Tara's computer and 100% Sierra's text reminders that yes. made that happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're like, I could do it. I just had to make myself sit down and do it. And yeah. Or you had to make me sit down and do it. <laughs> being that I'm such a flaky airhead but um, like i do think that like you said a air signs are flaky mm -hmm. as a, a weakness but uh, but it doesn't most of the time it's not intentional and but it's the not air personal signs, it's not like i feel like flaky can be seen as like you make plans with someone and at the last minute they're like no actually i can't do it gotta cancel like i would see yeah. that as flaky and having no reason behind it you know but yeah I don't know. It's more like really head in the clouds. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I All of the air signs in my life, you need to tell them like the time to meet 30 <laughs> minutes earlier than what you That's actually true. intend on meeting. Mm -hmm. Every yep. single one of them. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of air sign people. And like absolutely everyone that I can think of right now, if I would like them to arrive <laughs> at 830 I will tell them to come at 8. Because Us, Oh, here's a good story. Us running to catch the train. On Long Island, and how oh you were God. like in a panic over missing the train, and I was like, "We have five minutes. We'll make it there." And you're like, "It's a six-minute walk." <laughs> oh my God! Like we'll walk this fast. Is not okay with we'll me. Get there. And you're like, "I hate this. I hate this." <laughs> I hate it. I hate. I mean, I think it's my mom who like drove that home with me. We always arrived places early. My mm -hmm. Earth sign mom, reliable. <laughs> we always arrived places like 15 minutes early, like at least 15 minutes early. Mm -hmm. And so, if the train's coming at eight o'clock, I'm gonna get there at 7:45. And you're like, it's. It's seven fifty three. Nah. Well, let me go to the bathroom and then we'll go to get the train. <laughs> Just like no. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I would say about air signs, though, is that because they are very in their heads, that goes along with their emotions and mm -hmm. being a not so emotional sign, not affected by emotions, not showing emotions in the same way. Um, I've come to understand this. No, that's a lie. <laughs> I've come to accept it. <laughs> I don't really accept it either. I have come to, I have learned about it, let's mm -hmm. say. I have learned this and maybe I understand the concept, but in practice it's a lot harder for me because um, air signs will intellectualize their emotions, especially if you have an air moon. Like, I don't know, my best friend, you, my husband, uh, both my parents, uh, <laughs> all of you with your crazy air my moons. My mom and dad have air moons. <laughs> <sighs> I just can't, your child, Penelope, my goddaughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All of you have mm -hmm. air moons. And when you're feeling something super emotional, you're like, let me think about this and just move past it. And I'm like, I need to feel it. And mm -hmm. even if I guard it away, like I feel like, I don't know, I feel like, um, again, this goes along with the not being intentional part. But like throughout my whole childhood, now I realize that everybody in my life had air moons. But <laughs> so many comments were said that like genuinely hurt my feelings. And I would be so like hurt by them and I like they like have stayed with me for so long because I have this earth moon that just like keeps things guarded and remembers everything and then all these air moon flighty people are like ha 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 mean comment didn't mean it ha ha and I'm like this not even mean comment but just like random thing that uh that to me was like hurtful but I can't I can't express it because to air signs it's more of like but I was just joking, therefore it shouldn't have hurt you. Mm -hmm. And and for the rest of us non-air people, it's like, no, but it did hurt me. And I would like to express myself of how my emotions are feeling. And you guys are like, what are emotions? Um, I'm getting a little mean. I'm going to let you take it You're away. getting a little aggressive <laughs> towards air signs. <laughs> Considering you have so many in your life. I do, but that's people. why I feel it so much. <laughs> like I love air signs because obviously they I'm surrounded by them. They're my favorite. They're my favorite. But um but I do think that that's something that non air people need to like uh I don't know, it helps me mm -hmm. to realize, even if I don't understand it, but like to realize like, you know, 
if uh, if I'm trying to communicate my emotions to Guillaume who doesn't understand something, like uh because of how i'm like so like deeply emotionally feeling something i will make a chart i will make a spreadsheet i will make a list because i know that as someone who's a air sun air moon air many things that he processes things more in an intellectual way and even if that's not how i express my emotions i know that that's how he receives it and it really helps me to think that way whereas mm -hmm. i think also for air signs it's really helpful and important if like air signs think or not think but like take note that other signs don't intellectualize their emotions and so expressing emotions and showing them um are really important for the other elements yes and now to argue the other side of it because it is important <laughs> to you know have emotions and everything and the air signs do have emotions they just show them differently and they I think a lot of the time we'll internalize them because they don't want to upset everyone around them. If they're upset Especially about something, my Libra over yes. here. If you're upset about something and you're an air sign, I would say a lot of the time you're like, well, let me keep it to myself because I don't want to upset everybody else about it. Yeah. And I mean, that's just, you know, it's better to uh, think through the emotion rather than explode, I think is like their yeah. viewpoint a lot of the time. Um, yeah. And, yeah, they internalize it. Yeah, and I think that sometimes that, that can be, I don't know, there's a positive and negative side to everything, whereas, like, me, I'm like, you're not showing anything, therefore you feel nothing. How could you feel nothing? <laughs> oh, my God. What was that thing? We were watching Queer Eye. Mm -hmm. Me and Guillaume were watching Queer Eye. And, um, and there's something, like, I don't know, like, of course, something super emotional because I just lose it every time I watch Queer Eye. I freaking love Queer Eye. And, um... And I was like, oh, my God, I feel exactly what they're feeling right now. And then Mr. Aquarius, straight face watching the TV, goes, I feel nothing. <laughs> Did he, like, laugh after he said it? Or was this just, like, he turned and said very blankly, I feel nothing? He, he just said it. Okay. And, and, like, and then I just, I burst out laughing because I was like, do you realize how much of an Aquarius you are right now? And then we both kind of laughed about it. But, like, at another point, he kind of said to me, like, I guess that is, like, an air sign thing because I really felt nothing when we were watching it, like, nothing at all. <laughs> I don't think it is an air sign thing because I cry at Queer Eye, like, almost every episode. Yeah. But I, I don't know. It might be more know. of an Aquarius thing. Aquarius, Aquarius weirdo. Aquarius are the ones to really not have them. Of, of the air signs, I think Aquariuses are the ones to really not show emotion. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Or feel you it, gotta drag I guess, it out of in them. this case. <laughs> that was like when, and Aquariuses are known for being like the aliens of the Zodiac. Mm -hmm. And like, especially Aquarius moons, hello to my mom. <laughs> um, the biggest alien of them all. Um and who would like just love to meet an alien that's like her life goal um but uh they are known for being like the the weirdos of the zodiac and the ones who like i don't know they don't feel things the same way and so when we were watching coco and i showed Guillaume um the movie coco i was like silently like bet with myself like if he doesn't cry he is an alien like it is affirmed but th thankfully thankfully it got him and he cried because <laughs> how can you not cry watching coco i don't care what your sign is what your element is but mm. air signs intellectualize emotions we have stayed on air signs for quite a while we, we love have. our air signs Let's yeah so water signs um are the last of the four elements they are cancer which is the cardinal sign Scorpio, which is the fixed sign, and Pisces, which is the mutable sign. So um, going back to the orientation of signs, water signs are emotionally oriented. So they, everything is emotion. So in stark contrast to everything we just said about air signs, <laughs> just the opposite of it for water signs, completely emotionally oriented. But because of this, they are very intuitive and emotional. They are nurturers and they are sensitive to their environment. So... Um, I would say that where an air sign would like keep everything inside and um and not discuss emotions, You're like not a water sign it with a water sign. There, there's no chance of containing it with a water <laughs> sign. Like, I, as far as emotions go, um, cancers 
are seen as being the most emotional, meaning like you are going to see it when uh, a cancer is upset. If they're happy in any sort of emotional case, you're going to see it right away. And it's almost going to be like whiplash as far as how quickly they can have a burst of emotion and then move on to something else. Mm -hmm. Um, A Scorpio is a really like deep internalizing emotion, but like, not in an air sign way. It's more like um, uh, they will feel something so deep down. And like I it's almost to a point of um, like if they love you, they will be obsessed with you <laughs> like they you know, like it's so extremes. That's the what I, where I'm trying to get like the emotions that are so extreme and so powerful. And then a Pisces has the emotions that are also like they're constantly contradicting each other. So they will want to do something so much and then they will want to do the exact opposite thing so much that it's like almost like a turmoil of emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, But also I will say my wonderful Pisces friend who's Pisces sun, Pisces moon in stark contrast again to all of my wonderful air people. Whenever I'm upset with something, she sees it, like notices it right away and she'll be like, wow, that must have been really upsetting for you. How are you feeling now? And I'm like, oh, my God, I that is upsetting. <laughs> I am upset. And thank you for asking because it feels so taboo, I guess, with like all my air people to like, let's discuss deeply how you're feeling right now. Mm-hmm. And it's just like my my Pisces friend is like, no, I want to know. Like, tell me how you're feeling. Let's dig into it. Like, and that so, must have been. It's so funny because as an air sign, I'm like, can we not dig into it? Like, why? Why do I want to dig into what I'm feeling right now? <laughs> And like with my Earth Moon, who's like got all these walls up and like the water's trickling in. I'm like, mm-hmm. I do want to discuss why I'm so sad right now. <laughs> and it's so wonderful to have people like that for me. But um, uh, but so strengths for water signs would be healing, peaceful, and trusting. They're very lovely people and very like, I don't know. They they're very nurturing too. And we'll um, throw throw the other one on top of that. Uh, creative artistic oh yeah um, yeah most of the water signs that i know especially i feel like pisces is very mm-hmm. um pisces very cre- much. very creative and very like um otherworldly like they're living on a different astrological plane mm-hmm. than the rest <laughs> of the water signs too yeah. and it and you see it in like their creativity and in their like kind of disconnect from reality mm-hmm. let's say yeah um and uh their weaknesses would be in different depression prone and erratic mm-hmm. um i will definitely vouch for the erratic one many of not many one particular cancer that i spent a lot of time with cancer sun cancer moon the amount of just like i felt like out of nowhere just like a whip of emotion came out and like struck us down mm-hmm. and we were like whoa you know like where did that come from and then the next minute like okay we're good moving on I was like, no, I'm down on the ground from this emotional whip you just slapped at me. <laughs> um, you know, just... I think I think a lot of the time the water signs will really like bask in the emotions as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Penelope does that a little bit. I, I have a story. One time she was probably like four, maybe three or four. She was little, and you know she'd have her emotional. I don't want to say meltdowns. She was really good and like never had tantrums or meltdowns or anything extreme, but she'd get really upset about something that was like, why are you so upset about this? And I said to her one time, you know, I think you like getting so upset and, and, you know, getting all worked up. And she's like, I do like to feel this way sometimes. And I was (laughs) like, okay. (laughs) And I really think it's like, not like a high for them, but to feel such a strong emotion and then to kind of like emit that emotion and then like to feel better. I think it's, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to how to explain it. But um, like no, they feel so much what? better after letting out that it's like it, like they like to feel so down and then so like high up, you know? Yeah. Yep. At least I, with her, because can... <laughs> when she's happy, she's the happiest kid in the world, and when she's down, yeah. she is down. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, but... I just remember like some sort of emotional whiplash with her when she was really little and you just taking it like an air sign champ and my fiery self was like I'm gonna fucking blow <laughs> you just like turn <laughs> I was like you can't be mad at your five year old goddaughter right now she was probably younger than that but like 
it was some sort of like I don't know what it was like she lost a Barbie shoe and it was like Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know we just went from like (laughs) and you just very calmly handled it whereas I think that if it were if I were to have a cancer child it just would not be the same because I would be I would be fiery and I don't think either of us would appreciate yeah no I I, I'm good with one cancer child I think in the future should I ever choose to have kids I would be the person who's like all right I can't conceive this (laughs) baby at this time of the year because I don't want another kid but like can we talk about that can we talk about that for a minute because seriously like for any other astro freaks out there like 100% for me like um that time of uh what like libra season if you if you're getting frisky during libra season that means you're gonna have a cancer baby and like that is just off (laughs) the table because no way i love cancers as like i don't know like i mean one of my best friends in the world is a cancer i have many awesome cancers that i love Mm -hmm. but being a mom to a cancer child like i just foresee that being a wild fail um, (laughs) for me so anyways um, where i have a friend who's a scorpio who she's like i want a cancer child so bad Mm because i want a baby who like needs love and i want to like like to give them all the love and it's like well water sign water sign that that makes sense mm-hmm. you know um anyways but um kind of like the the yin and yang of air and water and um we didn't really mention this going through it but um the uh earth and water signs are the feminine signs Mm -hmm. and then air and fire are the masculine signs so it kind of like again if we're very rudely connecting emotions to feminine signs um (laughs) uh i do believe that though whether or not like we're connecting it to that i do think that earth and water signs are much more in tune with their emotions and an earth sign would choose to acknowledge it and um and hold on to it for a later time if they need to. And a water sign is like, I have this emotion, and we're going to deal with it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then an air and fire sign's kind of like, um, what is emotion? I don't know. Um, I, like, I think maybe, like we said, with, with fire signs, it comes across more as passion. Mm-hmm. And then with air signs, it's more intellectualized. Yes. Um, whereas earth and water signs are really... Um, like they're feeling it and then they they deal with it in different ways um i think uh one thing that i was reading about like capricorn moons and how they have the ability to um completely like shut off their emotions in times of crisis in order to deal with the situation Mm -hmm. and that i have never connected more to anything like about capricorn moons than that because i felt that so much that whenever there has been like a serious like time of crisis and of course i'm about to like flip a shit i'm like like it's almost like i literally do like just turn the knob off i'm like you do not have time to do that right now off emotions off charge mode you're taking you're now in control what do you need to do to fix the situation and then like after everything is like solved and fixed i will have an emotional meltdown but it's like okay because we're good now Mm -hmm. so i think that that's more of how i don't know if that's all earth earth signs earth moons but i think that that's how an earth sign would handle that and a water sign in a time of crisis we would feel that they feel that they're in a time of crisis um yeah (laughs) again these are all generalizations yeah and also (laughs) depends on it depends on what you have in your chart and where it is everybody should do their birth chart especially if you listen to the cusping episode and you realize how important it is to know the time that you're born so you can find out if you're one of those cusper babies to see which sign you actually are Mm -hmm. yes yeah but so yeah those are the four um those are the four elements fire earth air and water and i mean i know we Uh, said the masculine feminine uh ones but um i don't know if we said which ones are compatible that's tell me air and fire and earth and water are compatible but again it's not strictly if you're an air sign you can only have fire sign friends it's it's just generally known that those signs kind of mesh better together and i feel like if you have that confliction in your own chart sometimes you feel like 
me in comparison to you. You're a very balanced, like your top three. You're you're a Libra, 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 you know, whereas mm-hmm. I've got Sagittarius Sun, Sagittarius Rising, and then Capricorn Moon. And so sometimes I have that internal conflict of like, hey, I'd like to be a fiery, go with the flow, lazy, fun person. And then my Capricorn Moon's like, you need to accomplish your goals. And so it has that kind of like, sometimes they can work well together, but sometimes I feel that inner turmoil a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And like, if you were what, like my cousin's wife is a Aquarius with a cancer moon, like, my God, what internal conflict must be going on Mm -hmm. with your main identity being the least emotional sign Mm -hmm. with your emotions being in the most emotional sign or one of them. And to have that inner conflict going on where I don't show my emotions yet, I show all of my emotions. Ah. So, you know, that's another interesting thing when you think of compatibility, knowing like if a water sign is like extra emotional, you're like, okay, they're a water sign. They're extra emotional. Let them be emotional. Let them feel their emotions and then we'll move on. And it's almost, uh, I feel like it helps you approach every person in your life with a little more grace when you know that it's, I don't know, I feel like with myself as well, this is why I behave this way because I have these elements in my chart because I have these signs in my chart and it helps me understand myself or to help me like uh, overcome certain things. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, yeah. Um also here's here's a fun little little thing that we noticed a couple of years ago. Um if you're ever talking to someone who doesn't know what element they're associated with, ask them what their favorite element is of oh my God, their yes. fire and water. And most of the time of people that I've asked, they, they pick their element. Yes, um, they do. The only person that I can think of that didn't was um your mom. My mom. Who prefers, yeah. she's a Capricorn, and she said water was her favorite element. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. again, she is the alien amongst She's the us. alien, but she's also, like, the most empath. Like, she's also, like, an HSP, like, the highly sensitive person. Mm-hmm. And I feel like water is something that, like, as far as, like, emotions going, like, it just kind of calms. Mm-hmm. So I feel like my mom, who's always, like, super on edge, feeling everybody else's emotions, can just, like, be calm in water. I feel like that's why she chooses it. But you're right. She was, like, the only one who chose water when she's an earth sign Mm -hmm. but my dad was the best when i asked him because he is a capricorn um he has a aquarius ascendant and he has a libra moon so he is earth and air um for his like top three and i remember asking him like like what's uh what's your if you had to choose an element what would you choose and he's like well i really like earth air is pretty cool though (laughs) not fire Nah. No, I, I I would choose Earth and I was just like in my like <laughs> astrological glory. Like you just had the best possible answer for your <laughs> particular birth chart. And then oh my god. Because obviously fire's the best element. Come on. But like for me. Um but like when I asked Guillaume, who's like also uh, you know, mostly air, <laughs> I was like, if you had to pick an element, what would you choose? And he's like, um, you need air to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> It was so great. <laughs> oh, it was so great. So yeah, that's a fun. That's a fun thing too to ask. Uh, to ask someone what their favorite if they had to choose between the four. Yeah. Yeah. What are they? That's favorite? a great point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the last thing to really say is that we've mentioned this before in a couple episodes that um, when you have a balanced group of people, like if you have earth, air, fire, and water, your group really feels balanced and. Um, I've mentioned that with some of my friends where, uh, the four of us hanging out are earth, air, fire, and water with you being air and my two best friends from home being earth and water. The four of us together just makes me so happy because you're my three like favorite people. And also we're like a really balanced group. Um, so take note of that. And our, our moms, the four of them are the four elements. You and your siblings are the four elements. And Mm -hmm. it's just, uh, our group of cousins, um, one of our group chats, it's the four elements and, uh, and it's just a constantly, uh, ridiculous, but very fun vibe. Um, the earth yeah. and the water signs in that group chat are the really funny ones, I would say. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to, to see like the people that you surround yourself with, or maybe like with family members, you know, um, like both of my parents are earth signs and at times we're really good. And at times... I'm like 
very annoyed. But it doesn't mean I don't love them. It just means that, like, we have that, you can tell, like, that we have those kind of conflicting, I don't know, uh, elements. Mm -hmm. And maybe, like, siblings, too. Like, if people are more, are closer with one sibling than the other or, um, I don't know, people in a group, it's really cool to just think of things based elementally. Um, Yeah. yeah. As um as someone who as an air sign who lives with two water signs, um, when they're cranky, I'm just like, let me out, <laughs> please let me out. <laughs> but again, it's like they need to feel their emotion, and then they and then they come back from it. So yeah, yeah. I feel like my parents, who are the earth signs, like deal really well with that. You know, like with the I'm just thinking about my mom with uh, your daughter and how they're just like. They're very like complimentary, like earth and water. Oh they yeah, just, yeah. They just work really and well. And your your mom and Penelope are like best buds when they're together. They oh for sure. They're very um very compatible, you know. <laughs> and my mom, who's like the crazy, crazy earth sign, who has the biggest collection of crystals and everything. Like mm-hmm. whenever, whenever uh, people come over, she's like, "Here's my crystal collection. Here are my rocks." <laughs> well, not maybe everybody, but many people. Mm-hmm. Um. And Penelope loves that, and yeah. uh, and they'll go swimming together, and that's like you know also really fun. So yes. it's cool how people get connected with their element. So um, maybe to do a big summary mm-hmm. of what each of the elements are yep. to end it all. Um, let's, fire let's signs. Let's go back and forth. You do the fire and air, and I'll do the earth and water. Perfect. So fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius are action people. Yes. Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, they are sensual people. Oh. Mm. Air air signs <laughs> are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, and they are intellectual people. And then the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, and they are emotionally oriented. Very good. Lovely. So that's an overview on the elements and Um, the next, uh, sign that we're going to be talking about is it's approaching Virgo season and Virgo is an earth sign. So that will be the next sign that we will be talking about. Yeah, Virgo season, I think maybe, maybe happening already by the time this episode is released. That's very true. Yeah. I think it might be the first day of Virgo season when this episode comes up. So cool. Then let me just check on that yeah when this episode comes out it will be the first day of virgo season happy, happy virgo, virgo season, season. Best friends from home <laughs> um <laughs> so we will be talking about virgos and two virgos um coming up yes. and talking a little bit more getting more in depth with the earthy people of mm-hmm. the world so uh yeah. why did we decide to talk about the elements today because the stars made us do it yeah Bye. Bye.